Hi guys, this is Man's Worth Quest for a Farm and today what we are going to be doing, I don't know if you saw our video that we recently released, we went to a um, fresh produce market and got all of this, so now I'm sitting with it on the dining room table and we've got to do something with it, so I'm going to give you a quick run through of what we want to do with everything. We are going to start with the tomatoes. These are, uh, tomatoes weren't bought, they've been in the freezer, so they're probably a little bit squidgy. So we're going to chop them up, boil them down. We are going to be making a salsa, a pasta sauce, and a pizza base out of them. We're going to use the some of the jalapenos in the um, salsa, and possibly half of the pasta sauce. I've already got some of the jalapenos outside air drying and then what we're going to do with some of the jalapenos is we are going to pickle them off because I make killer jalapeno poppers. Um, then we've got this giant bag of beetroot. We are going to boil that off and half of it's going to kind of get pickled and half of it will get sort of chopped up and popped in the freezer. Then we've got the onions, which we will just slice and chop all of them up. Some of them will go into the freezer. Some of them will go into the salsa. I'll probably keep a few out for kind of use at home. The butternut we're going to leave just as is because those will stay good for a long, long time. The grapes are going to go straight back into the fridge. Um, oh, I forgot. I also might make a chili oil with the jalapenos. Um... The grapes will go straight into the fridge. I promise you they will be gone for a long. The pineapples, uh, uh, you know those long pineapples over there? <laughs> the bananas, do you mean? The bananas we're going to leave for now. They need a bit of time to ripen up some more. So what we're going to do with them long term is as they start ripening up, we'll just chop them up, put them in the freezer. They are great for smoothies and that sort of thing. The rest will be for eating, and when they start getting a little bit over eating stage, we'll smush them up and make banana bread. The pineapples, I'm really excited. We're going to make some pineapple beer um, with six of them. Then the rest of them, we are going to, oh, we're going to dehydrate some of them, probably two trays of my dehydrator, and we are going to can some of them. Um, and keep some for eating and keep some for eating yeah, yeah. Um, then oh we're probably going to make some pickled onions as well I forgot that off my list and then we are going to with the apple oh with the pa potatoes we might can some of the potatoes the way the Mennonites do so water bath canning um, which is not FDA approved but we don't care we do it anyway we're in South Africa we do what we want we do what we want um and the apples i'm going to pop some of these apples are amazing i've never seen such big beautiful green apples um and so the apples some of them are going to get sliced and go into the dehydrator some of them are going to get turned into pie apples and canned um some of them are going to stay out for eating apples and we may or may not do a fruit leather with the apples. I'm going to see how quickly the boys are going through them. Um, I think they're going to lean towards the grapes and the bananas initially. So there you have it. We're going to get started. We've got a long day ahead of us. Um, I'm not going to subject you to us chopping up um, tomatoes and onions. So in the meantime, please like and subscribe. And follow us for all the little tips and tricks. And we'll see you shortly. Okay, over here I have our tomatoes that were frozen um, on the stove top, on the gas stove outside. I'm not going to add any water just yet. Uh, because the cells were slightly broken down during the freezing process, these tomatoes are quite squishy. Um, and you can see they do still have a little bit of ice on them. So I'm thinking that there should be enough liquid in these pots that we shouldn't need to add. But we will keep an eye on them and monitor that. 
then what I'll do is when they start um, boiling a little bit, I'm going to come and add some salt, pepper, probably some onion and garlic powder and some herbs. And this one is probably going to be our pasta sauce base. And then this one will end up being our pizza base sauce. Um, so we'll just let them sit here and do their thing for a bit. Okay, great. So now we are going to start cooking our salsa. We've cut our tomatoes, our onions, our chilies. Um, quick disclaimer, I'm not overly keen on bell peppers in my salsa, so I just double up on the onions. So we are going to do 10 cups of chopped tomatoes. Then the recipe calls for five cups each of onions and bell peppers. As I say, I'm just substituting for onions. So let's go with 10 cups of onion. So I like mine quite oniony, but not very bell peppery. Three. And then the next thing we're going to need is about two cups of chilies. So I've got my diced up jalapenos. These are, this is not two cups. I will be murdered instantly if I had to put two cups in there. It's loving things up a bit. So, well, it, sorry, the recipe calls for two and a half cups. This is closer to two cups. And you can also see I have, for the most part, seeded my chili. So I just sort of cut them in half and took most of the seeds out and whatever remains remains. They are, we're a household of five and there are two huge chili lovers in the house. There is one not chili lover in the house and there are two of us that will deal with chili. So this is going to come up to the boil. I'm going to add, oh, I forgot my lemon juice. How dumbass is that? Oh, sorry. How silly is that? Um, and now we need a cup and a quarter. So normally I would have um, lemon juice in the freezer from the three massive lemon trees on this property. Um, I don't actually quite know what happened last year why the lemon juice didn't make it into the freezer. But it will this year. So that is a cup and a quarter of lemon juice going in there. And now we just want to add some salt, pepper and garlic. Right, as this starts breaking down, I'll show you then basically what we're going to do is we're going to bring it to a boil, let it boil for a good 10 minutes. Ow! Um, bring it to a boil, let it boil for a good 10 minutes, and after that we are going to go ahead and can it up. Okay, cool. So the salsa is on. It's coming up to the boil. The pasta sauce is on outside. The pizza base is on outside. So... Um, one of our bowls of tomato is finally empty and we've got this much left of our salsa onions. So basically what I'm going to do is a very exciting, I'm just going to quickly bag them up and chuck them in the freezer. So, so that's three little bags of onions ready for the freezer and whoop, two, can I pitch it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually caught it. Good job. All right. So while my um, salsa is still on the go, I'm going to do a quick pickle for you. So basically what this is, is super, super quick, even parts. I'm putting two cups of water and two cups of vinegar. Ooh. 
Okay, I'd like to put maybe just a little bit extra vinegar. So I'll sort of put two and a half cups of vinegar. Okay, so we are going to be pickling the rest of our jalapenos and the rest of our sliced onions. So I, <coughs> excuse me, I have got my pickling jars washed off and soaking in hot water. And basically I'm not going to can my pickle at all. I am going to do just a hot pack and let them cool down. Why are you falling down? And that'll be that. Um, usually Nick snacks as pickling spice, but um, we're fresh out uh, because we knew we had so much to do today. We just rushed off. Good Lord, that's a lot of babies. <laughs> um, we just rushed off and got some at our local shop. So I'm going to cook this. Okay. And basically all I need to do is bring it up to the boil. And that'll be that. So Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pack my onions and my jalapenos into the pickling jars. Come along with me and I shall show you. Okay, there are my jalapenos. You can see I've given them a bit of a wash. We can get this all out of the way. See, I've just left them soaking in some water. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I am going to pack my jalapenos and my onions in the jar so long. I just wanted to get them a rinse out. And I can't get the thing on. So I'm even rinsing them still in hot water. I'm just rinsing the soap out of them. I've These jars are relatively standard, but um, this one is super cool. So basically what we're going to do is I'm going to start by chucking a little bit of salt into the bottom of each jar. Because I do like a salty pickle. Meanwhile, Nikki is going to be slicing and dicing her pineapple. She's going to do apple as well, and that's going to start going into the dehydrator. Okay. So and I'm going to cut up chunks of fruit that we're going to can in a simple syrup. Yes, that too. So a lot's going on. We haven't touched those beetroot yet, but we'll get there. I have faith in us. It's not even lunchtime yet. Okay, so you want to can them relatively tightly. Oh, gosh, initially I was worried I didn't have enough jalapenos for this jar. Now I'm worried they're not going to fit. Yeah, but if, if they don't all fit, man, then we can put some aside Ooh. to use in something else. We could randomly start throwing them around. Or that. There's a bit of a gap over here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you never want to fill it all the way, all the way up to the top, because when you are pickling, especially if you're not going to be canning your pickle, you want your items to stay beneath the liquid line. So, I think that'll do it. I'll just put another two in because I can. So, what I do with these is I make the most amazing jalapeno poppers for when it's bright time. And everybody loves them. And our me. dad is coming next week. Yay! And he will definitely want jalapeno poppers. Okay, and then here I am just again tightly, tightly packing. Okay, so you can see I'm leaving the headspace there. So I've just grabbed this little jug because it's easier to pour that way. And Okay, if we're going to need more, that's fine. I'll just put more up. Yay! 
Oh, why are there so many bay leaves in this mix? <laughs> no, you want a lot of bay leaves. Yeah, but damn. <clears throat> Oh. Also put a lot of bay leaves. Not this many. Okay, and then uh, I'm just going to get along. Pokey thing. And... Such scientific terms. <laughs> I wasn't Thank sure what I was going to use. Okay, so you can see... <coughs> the level <coughs> of the pickling fan is dropping. So we can just top that up again. Pop our fabulous little glass lid. I really do love this thing. Okay, that is going to sit for a good seven days or so and then we're going to do the exact same thing with our onions right so these little guys are all going to sit and chill out here until they have um cooled down and then i'm going to pop them straight into the fridge or onto the pantry shelf whichever i see fit probably the pantry shelf no, if there's space in the fridge. No, I don't think so. Okay, so that's the pickling squared away. I'm going to go check on my salsa again, and I'm going to hand you over to Nix, where she is going to start taking you through what she's doing by the dehydrator. All right, I have now got all my fruit sliced up, and I'm just putting it in the dehydrator. I am going to probably end up with two trays of pineapple and three I think of apple um, and we will then switch this on and go put it somewhere out of the way because this is going to probably run for a good few hours so I'm putting the pineapple at the bottom because I do think that that'll take a little bit longer than the apple but I want to get this going quite quickly because my apple has already started going a little bit brown and Chuckles is sitting here watching me very closely do you want some pineapple do you want some I don't think you eat this no, I didn't think you'd want that. And that is ready to be plugged in somewhere out of the way where it can just do its thing. Okay, so I did make a video of me turning up my salsa, but I don't know what went wrong. Um, so it didn't record properly. So I'm just going to can up another two um jars so basically this is what it looks like all cooked we are going to add it in i have got a proper fun funneling what canning funnel arriving sooner rather than later um but so we are packing our hot liquid into hot jars so we are hot packing my water bath canner is sitting on the stove, ready to go. So because this one is going to go into the canner, I am going to use some oh, little lappy soaked with vinegar. And I'm going to go around the edges. You want to feel that there are no cracks and this is going to help make a decent seal these canning lids should never be reused always use a new one the rings however can be reused then what we're going to do is we're going to tighten them just finger tight you don't want to sort of screw them in and as soon as my canning water is up to the boil i'm going to put my solitary little jar of salsa in and 
that is going to go for a good 15 minutes. I usually let it run five minutes longer just because I'm neurotic. So it'll go in for 20 minutes and then we shall have canned salsa. All right, we are now going to be starting with the simple syrup for the fruit that we want to can. So I've chopped up some pineapple already and I am going to start chopping up some apples now, but I want to get my syrup going. Um, it's a very simple recipe. It is literally half sugar, half water. So I've got one and a half cups of sugar here and I'm adding one and a half cups of water to that. And then we will literally let that sit. Let all the sugar dissolve and let it come up to the boil. And then we will add our apples into it. We'll let the apples cook in the syrup for a little bit and then we will can them. Um, the canner is still going. This poor canner has been working overtime today. Just letting it come back up to the boil after Mandy canned the salsa. And I am now going to go and chop up some apples and then we will be back to show you what we're doing. Okay, our pot is now boiling. So we are going to add our apples in. So we've got, it's about three very big apples chopped up. They are going in and they are going to cook in our syrup for about, I think it's about five minutes that they cook in there for. And then after that, we are going to transfer them to our glass jars and put them into the water bath canner so that they seal up nicely. Okay, our apples are now cooked. So I'm going to just spoon them into our jars. So these jars have been soaking in super hot water. So they are extremely hot at the moment. And our apples are soft, soft, soft. So we are just going to divide these between these two jars. Okay. So let's just make sure that there's no air bubbles in here. So here's our pineapple. So we are going to keep water bath can these for how long? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. And then these will be ready to go into storage. Okay, so we are in the home stretch. This is our pizza base. So what we're going to do now is we, oh, goodness. We are going to blitz it up so that it's nice and smooth. Um, you could go ahead and can it, but my advice would then be to follow a canning stable recipe. Um, we are just going to pop it into little freezer bags and freeze it. So, blitzing it up. That is what it looks like. Quite happy with that. Let me carry on. Okay, now that we've got our pizza base sauce all blitzed up, we're literally going to just put it into these baggies and then put it in the freezer. It's cool enough to go into the freezer by now. Okay, here is our pasta sauce. This one we are not running through the food processor because we do want this to be a little bit thicker and sort of chunkier so that we've still got little bits of tomato floating around in there. 
So I reckon that is good. Okay, and then because we ran out of space in our pots, I also did a tray of roasted tomatoes. So we are also going to throw these into a freezer bag. That was what, just some herbs and... Some salt, pepper, olive oil, <clears throat> uh, parsley and oregano. Went on here. Okay, so it's the end of a very long day and I've got to say, not too shabby. So let's have a quick run through of what we've got. So in the dehydrator outside, we have got the apples and the pineapples that are still going to go overnight and probably most of tomorrow. We've got our pickled jalapenos here. Um, as you can see, the jar looks so pretty. I love it. Um, we've got our pickled onions. Um, then here we've got our roasted tomatoes, which we're going to use up on Saturday. Then here we've got three little bags of a pasta sauce. Then we have three little bags of pizza base. We've also got some canned apples, some canned pineapple, um, some simple syrup, which is also canned, so it's shelf stable. Um, we have salsas, um, one, two, three, four, five salsas. Um, I don't know if you can see this one, it's indented. So they're looking good. So we could actually take this ring right off and it's nicely sealed up and um, then we have our one that didn't make it into the canner and as you can see my boys have already climbed right into it um that was gobbled up for lunch so what we didn't get, i'm just trying to think if i missed something what we didn't get to was the beetroot so tomorrow we are going to crack on with the beetroot like we said we're going to be boiling it and half of it is going to be pickled. I'll use the same method as I used here. And half of it will go into the freezer. I'm thinking of making that Russian soup. What is that Russian soup? Borsk. Borsk. I'm thinking of, uh, let me think overnight. We'll see how energetic I feel Oh, you tomorrow. forgot to mention we chopped up all the onions and those are already in the freezer. Yes. Yes, we have about a million bags of onions in the freezer. Just straight up raw chopped onions in the freezer so that when we need a base for a dish... We don't have to worry about actually hauling an onion out and we don't have to worry. You know, onions sort of tend to go a bit sharper as they sit and sit and sit. So that ain't going to be happening with us. So now we just need to get all of this stuff labeled. You can bet your bottom dollar. I am pouring myself a big branas. I think somebody might have called it a mega pint at some point. That was one. That was wine. Tanik, you'll have a mega pint of wine and I'll have a big branas. And um, please hit us in the comments. Let us know if you know what a branas is if you're not from South Africa. And um, we'll probably see you back tomorrow with those beetroots. And we're still going to clean up this kitchen. And we still have to clean up the kitchen. <laughs> Maybe a double branas, two branas, two triple branas. <laughs>